When we went over the RC circuit, we discussed two methods to find the time constant of the circuit, and we're going to revisit them now in the context of the RL circuit. Now, of course, the methods are the same, it's just that you're not really doing it on the same circuit, and therefore you're not considering the same graphs or the same quantity. But overall, it's the same idea. So first things first, recall that tau, the time constant for the RL circuit, is equal to the ratio L over R. And what tau is, is an order of magnitude of the duration of the transient state. Let's say you have tau is equal to two seconds. That doesn't mean that the transient state lasts two seconds. It means that the duration of the transient state, however, is on the order of magnitude of two seconds. So it's not minutes, it's not hours, it's not days. It's a few seconds. Roughly five to six tau. So 10, 12 seconds, call it. Round it to 15 seconds if you want to be safe and really argue that you've reached steady state. The point is, that's what tau represents. And so it's an important quantity to know, and you can find it graphically if you're not able to compute it because maybe you're missing one of the two values between L and R. So the first method is to use the graph and to say that, well, this is I max, which is the steady current that you reach in the case of a rising current. Here, call this I max or I zero in the case of a falling current. It's the current that you start with, and then it falls exponentially, and tau is going to be the time that it takes to reach two-thirds of I max, or for the value of I zero to drop by two-thirds. So in the first case, you would take two-thirds of I max, which you can read off of the graph, and you would figure out the corresponding amount of time. And that there would be tau. You could do the same thing here, except you'd want to drop the value by two-thirds, and so really you'd take I0 over 3 here because you only have one-third left if you drop by two-thirds. And you find the time associated with that value, and that is your time constant, tau. So pretty straightforward, especially if you have a nice scale on the vertical axis, and you just find the time it takes to either reach two-thirds of I max or to drop to I0 over 3. So one-third of the initial current. Another way to find tau using a graph is to use the tangent at the origin method. And so you have, of course, the same two graphs where you have I max for the rising current. That's the steady state. And then I0 is your initial current if you have a falling current in your RL circuit. Well, what you do is you draw the tangent at the origin. To the graph, and when it intersects here is when you reach t equals tau. So when it intersects your horizontal asymptote I max, t is equal to tau. Same idea for a falling current, except it's a little easier to draw because all you have to do is reach the horizontal axis, and it will intersect here at t equals tau. Thanks for watching this video. At Congress Academy, we create custom study guides so that you don't have to. Send us your syllabus and some old exams, and we'll put together lecture notes, practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions, and classic exam questions so that you don't waste your time. All you have to do is log in and focus on studying what matters most. And if you have questions, we're available to help. If you'd like to learn more about how Congress Academy can help you do well, check us out at congressacademy.com. We look forward to helping you. See you there.